Hello there, this is the assembly of the vibrating bird feeder, or the vibrating bowl thing from Viking Design at Thingiverse, I will link to that and if you want to google it at Thingiverse, I think if you write Viking, like you know the Swedish guys a thousand years ago and so, so you print Viking and then vibro or vibrating then you will find this excellent vibrating uh, dispenser so it prints like this there is the bottom part and this is the top vibrating part and then this is the bowl and this is the motor holder or motor compartment and then there are these four legs and dog bones and try to print them in PETG if you have or if you can because this will this have yeah there's a risk that they will break after uh, yeah many hours um, my printer wasn't in the PETG mode today so I made my first in PLA see how long they last and then I would suggest you to print them with a hundred percent fill in. I don't really know why I got this this little problem in I don't know if you see that there it's not fully filled in these end areas and that's not good but it then you have to keep uh, track of the, of the orientation of stuff so if I'm right I think I'm right now it's gonna be something like this and that I'm doing this preliminary now and then you understand you slide that in the same way and then the vibrating bowl will be bolted on to this top plate like this and then we will have my special additions here with the optogate etc and then the motor will come in here with a unbalanced flywheel so we'll go bzzz and the thing will start to move smoothly in that direction we pick them up with optogate and that's uh, about it or almost but the most important thing here for me is to tell you don't do the same mistake as I just did for the second time I think I bolted this on and then unfortunately I couldn't get access to mount the motor compartment because I just covered the screw hole up here so this is the thing you have to do first and the trickiest thing is actually to find bolts in right dimensions uh, this is all something like I'm gonna use something like an M3 16 millimeters or something like that and that is just a little bit too long it will you will find it here a little bit just getting out here a few one millimeter something like that and that's not good because this is where we're gonna clamp them over on so I hope I can fix that with a few washes that's what it's called Bricka for those of you who would like to learn some Swedish this is Bricka and this is the screw and then we need the nut an M3 nut. If I have find something like that here. Of course, I will edit that this down later on. Uh, yes, that is an M3 nut. Mutter in Swedish. Ta -da. So, I think I tested this before. Bolt, bolt goes down, or screw goes down there. And then we need to trick this little fellow into there is a hex shaped thing inside here that is hopefully will help us get the nut in place when we tighten the screw and I think I'm gonna do a trick with some of my favorite stuff this is uh, we call it betyl tape in Swedish 
it's a sort of a a black rub stuff a clay stuff that will I hope will keep the the nut in place okay so uh, I have done some adjustments with a knife here to get some stuff away and now we hope for the best I don't think there is any up and down on this and of course we want this tight because this is where the vibrations will be fed through the this basement and then further on ah, up to the to the bowl Try again I think I put my finger on the nut and this is when you hope for a grip in the thread, yes, there we go. Ta da! You see, and maybe I should have spent some glue for this too. But since there is it's always a risk that I make mistakes, I'm not 100% that I don't have to disassemble this again. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. So you see? I think we need one more washer down here. So then you know, uh, M3, 60 millimeters. Or maybe the guy who designed this in New Zealand actually is into the inch system. It's amazing that we still have these different systems, two different systems, even though it almost kill uh, it really killed the Hubble telescope you know and there was also some some Mars rover space missions that were totally fucked up due to a misunderstanding of Imperial as I think they used to call it and metric system and there is an old say say that no it's no problem USA is going metric inch by inch there we go da, 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 and get away with that back right the thing perfect yep and then we just have to bolt this on top it is also quite tricky to find I'm using some sort of wooden screws here that is something like I think it's something like 10 millimeters and the upper dimension is three millimeters I would have loved this the head to be just a few millimeters wider because the holes up here is quite wide and now I'm sneak peeking at my monitor to see that I'm doing this in the correct direction Yes, that's where it's gonna be. Ta da! And we need six of these. There might be a slight noise in the background that is my electric heater fan for the the workshop finally the this is Christmas yeah this is Christmas day ha huh. this is the, the kind of the laziest day in Sweden or Scandinavia because the Santa thing or all that stuff was yesterday Christmas Eve but I think in US this is the big day 25th but here everything is closed and you can just eat the stuff that you didn't eat yesterday so you don't have to work that much for your family with dinner and stuff and we finally get some winter weather of course no snow but at least whoops to be one degree almost one degree below zero that goes for the west coast of Sweden the south southern west coast where I live Gothenburg a little bit more north 
there is a little bit more snow and a little bit more winter, but not as it used to be. I heard that it's already, even though it's not New Year's Eve yet, so it's no doubt that 2020 will be the warmest year in Sweden ever, at least for the 162 years of measurements or something like that. Ta -da. There we go, and you see this three, what did I say, uh, wooden screws, they were three millimeter thick in top and they were about 10 millimeters long, tall, whatever you would say. So, and then they will slide in like this. I printed these dog legs in, or dog bones in a in a golden filament that I bought on eBay a few weeks ago. Really shiny. I don't know why I picked gold here. Maybe because that's what's in the machine. And uh, so that is surprisingly metallic. I would say I, I don't I won't force this into the bottom because I will work with the motor compartment later on. But this is just this is this is I think. And then I'll have to print and this compartment is a little bit too big for the motors I use. I have a simple three volt motor. But I have made designed sort of an adapter and I make sure that I put that on Thingiverse too. I don't think I did that. To to sort of wrap the smaller motor in and then we can clamp the motor on here and we need of course we need the unbalanced flywheel too. I print that out and then I continue this this build and then my plan is to show you how to set up your Raspberry and code it and share my code for for a uh, the first version or a simple version of, of this dispenser and I will also show you how to interface the small DC motor and how to interface the octogate that goes here. So I'll print that stuff, the mo uh, print the, the print the octogate stuff, the funnel, the flywheel for the motor and the adapter for the smaller motor and yeah and then I continue this video Bye-bye.